morning, everybody. It's good to be in a place where it's warm, isn't it? Well, one good thing about it, we know our preacher's going to be happy today because it's cold. And you know what he says about the cold weather. We're glad you're here, and looks like we've got a few that decide to stay home and stay by the fire, and that's okay, too. We're all here to praise our Heavenly Father this morning, and we, uh, like I said, we're just glad you're here. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the day. Lord, we thank you for the rain that you've sent our way as we have been praying for, for months now about the rain. We thank you for that. Lord, we th even thank you for the cooler weather. It's not, uh, not good for some of us and others uh, like it, but we know it's got to be. It's that time of year. Father, we just pray for our service this morning, Lord, that, uh, uh, that we would open our hearts and our minds that we would all receive something this morning that you have for us. Father, we thank you for being here. We thank you for, uh, uh, for our band this morning, Lord, as they lead us off in a time of worship. We give all the praise and glory to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <coughs> Some glad morning when his life is over, I'll fly away to our home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away in the morning when I die. Bye. Thank you. 
I can't. 
You got it? I got you. I got you. Hey, good morning. We're not going to give you double duty, man. Oh, man, come on now. Everybody ought to have a big old smile on your face. Everybody smiling? Come on now. Come on now. I need to see some big old smiles for this wonderful weather we're having, right? My goodness. I'm going to tell you something, man. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, you know, when it, all you people that think that say you like it when it's 110, y- y'all just don't know how gr- grouchy everybody is when it's 110, all right? But when it's, uh, when it's about 30 or 20 degrees, I mean, everybody's smiling because you're happy to be in here where it's warm, man. It's already getting kind of hot up here, man. I, I, golly. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, hey, we're going to get our four days of winter, okay, in Texas. If you're new to Texas, it's going to change in four days, all right? And uh, we'll be back to the, back to the reg- regularly scheduled programming. But anyways, uh, anyways, uh, m- Monday, tomorrow. Uh, because because there's a chance that, uh, man, there could be a little bit of ice out there. Uh, the women's Bible study at 1 and uh, the one at 6.30 and grief share at 6. Uh, man, going to go ahead and postpone and not meet this week. Uh, Marina, uh, going to have a fun day planning this Friday, January 19th at 12.30 p.m. at Blackjacks in Dublin. Uh, open to anyone interested in helping with that. Uh, outdoor shooting sports, the 22 bench rest competition this Saturday. Uh, if you didn't make it out to the last one, uh, man, you you know you, you even if you want to come watch, it's it's pretty pretty doggone uh, pretty doggone impressive uh, to come out and see that. Uh, but that's uh, then a, let's see the bench rest competition this Saturday, and then the pistol competition the following Saturday, the 27th. There's info flyers on the offering tables. Uh, they're doing a um, ladies Saturday, February the third, self defense class in the morning and gun safety and practice in the afternoon free it's free lunch is going to be provided just they just need you to sign up so uh, they can have a head count and everything on that becky neal right over here becky neal's got uh, your giving statements if you want a print a printed record of your giving for 2023 see her uh lindsey lindsey moore right over here uh you see the heart and everything out there you've seen the flyers uh valentine's banquet coming up uh february 17th February 17th, uh, she can take care of your tickets and everything right there. Got the band Branded is going to be here. Uh, they've been with us a couple of times, a really, 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 really good group of guys. Uh, so, man, make plans to, uh, to come out and, uh, man, be a part of that. Going be, to be a great, 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 great day. Uh, but just saw we're not having we're not having children's church today, so kiddos, y'all got to stand in here. Uh, them twins can come sit with me, man. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. I saw Courtney over there like, oh, my gosh, you know. <laughs> Anyways, hey, y'all stand up. Y'all stand up. You know, I think this was, I'm not going to embarrass them, but I think this was the week of engagements, Damon. You know, we've had, we got a couple of couples that got engaged. I don't know what's all coming next, but you guys that got engaged, congratulations. But well, you turning red over there. Why are you turning red? I'm telling you, she's still not sure, John. I'm just telling you, man. I'm telling you. But uh, congratulations to, to you guys. Hey, uh, you guys, uh, do you know everybody in here? Everybody know everybody? If you know everybody, raise your hand. All right, that, you know what that tells me right there? You suckers ain't intermingling enough, all right? All right, it, it ain't like some Angus over here and Brahma over here. We need to intermingle a little bit. Go find somebody that you do not know, all right? Get, out, get yourself out of your comfort zone. Go find somebody that you do not know. Shake their hand, give them a hug, and introduce yourselves. You got 60 seconds to do that. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Hey, somebody says that. All right. Did everybody find somebody, at least one person, that you did not know? You did? All right, good for you, Karen. 
Everybody else, found you found one person that you did not know. Now you've got a friend for life, correct? All right, good deal. Hey, let me pray for us. Let me pray for us, and then we're going to get back going here. Father, we thank you for the day. Lord, we thank you for, uh, man, just for this opportunity, uh, God, to be able to gather up here this morning. Lord, I thank you for, uh, man, for, uh, for, for, for new faces. Uh, Lord, for, for any guests that we have here today. Lord, I just, man, God, I pray that you, Lord, I pray your blessing upon them. Uh, Father, I thank you for, uh, man, those that may be tuning in online. Uh, Father, I just, man, I, I, I pray the exact same thing there, Lord, that you would just bless them today. Uh, Lord, I pray that everything that takes place here in this service, Lord, from the music to the word, God, I just pray that it honors you and that it glorifies you. Uh, Father, we, we, we do want to pause this morning. And, uh, Lord, just very specifically, Lord, uh, man, continue to, keep, continue to keep Wade Gustin lifted up. Uh, Father, we pray for, Lord, for him and Melissa, Lord, their entire family there. Lord, I just pray that your peace, Lord, that your healing would just surround that family. Uh, and, Father, for, man, for Denise, Lord, as, as uh, man, she's traveling, Lord, as she's going to be up there, uh, man, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where, wherever she's at up there, Lord, just pray your traveling mercies upon her. And, uh, Lord, I pray that you, you give each and every one of the doctors the guidance that they need. Uh, Father, keep us safe here this morning. Uh, Lord, may everything that we do honor you. Jesus, it's in your name we pray. Amen.
Go ahead and stand up, y'all. Sing this next song. Sing it with everything that is within you. Lord, we just come to you right now, and Lord, we want to say thank you for taking our chains, for setting us free from whatever we're bound to, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. You're the only one that can set us totally free. Lord, we thank you for sending your only son to die for each one of us. Lord, I just pray again that you open our minds and our hearts to receive the word that you have for each and every one of us, because it's going to be a special one. Lord, we thank you for Jimmy. Don't let it be his words. But you just speak a mighty, mighty message through him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. It's a more robust bigger bearded Jimmy today. Uh, uh, guys, I uh, just get the, I always think it's kind of a privilege whenever I get to come up here and, uh, and do this. Uh, and I've, I've actually, this has been, 
it's been on, it's been on my on my heart for a long time. We uh, give you some background. We we went to uh, a play uh, in October. Uh, our our daughter in law had tickets had tickets to uh, asked us if we if we wanted to get tickets and go watch The Promise uh, in Glen Rose. I've never watched it. Uh, and I've always wanted to. I'd always heard great things about it, and I thought, man, you know, I said that sounds that sounds really good. I think we should do it. Well, it's right in the middle of uh, football season, uh, and so you know what comes on with football season. And I've told y'all before, you know, not to not to, I, I don't want any sympathy. I'm not asking for that, but you know, football season it's a seven day a week job. It it takes a lot out of you, you know, from August, uh, say really July, you know, until however long it lasts. So it it, it lasts a long time, and, and it's a uh, you know, depending on how the season goes, it can be the greatest of experiences, or it can it can really be a it can be tough. You know, it can be tough. Uh, and so she asked us if we if we wanted to go watch this play. And so I told her I was like, and Deanne, we're like, man, we'd we'd love to go. We'd love to go do it. And so I had to work, uh, you know, till you know one or two on a, that Saturday. Uh, and then we decided, you know, we're gonna make kind of make a day of it. Uh, and so we we left and we go to Glen Rose and we. Uh, we sit there, and we're going to go to Local Coyote right outside of Glen Rose there and get something to eat. Uh, and if you haven't been there, you know, that's a great spot, great food. And, and so we get in there. There's a live band playing, and we're sitting down. Uh, and I'm sitting kind of on the edge uh, over here of the table. Uh, and so everybody else uh, is, is right over here, and they're carrying on some great conversations and stuff. Uh, guys, and uh, like I said, you know, I, I just told my wife this morning, my hearing, I just, I just can't hear stuff much. I'm, my hearing's going bad, you know. So I'm sitting there, and it's loud, and there's distractions, uh, and so everybody's over there cutting up, having a great time, and I'm sitting here on the on the end, going, "What? What? What are y'all talking? What are you talking about? You know?" So I, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of sulking because I'm I'm left out of the conversations, you know. Do you ever kind of feel like that, you know? So I'm I, I'm kind of left out, uh, and so then we, we we get and then we go to the play. Uh, and we get there, and of course, there's no parking because we're running late because, you know, the food took longer. Uh, and by the time we get there, you know, I end up having to park by the road, uh, and, you know, we have to hike in there. So, so I, I already know that, you know, my, my attitude's probably not, it's not the best, you know. Whenever, whenever I get there, I'm, I'm kind of upset, you know, that we're having to walk this far and doing all this. But I've learned, you know, in, the, in my years that usually... Uh, whenever I, if I'm if I'm going to receive a blessing, there's usually the devil does his best uh, to, to try and to, to nullify it, you know, to try to try and and make me uh, b b be in a bad mood, uh, and that's 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 really what was happening. So we finally get in and we find our seats, uh, and that you know that took a little bit too, uh, but we found our seats and we get there and you know they're singing hymns. Uh, and they're doing all this, and then they come out, and they kind of tell what the play is going to be. And if you haven't been over there to see it, you know, it's awesome. They've got live animals, uh, you know, and it's the whole story of Jesus' life, you know, and, and all the stuff that, he done, that he, he's, he's done, and it goes all the way uh, from, from, you know, whenever uh, he, he, he was preaching in the synagogues and doing all that, and all the way to, to his, his death on the cross. And it's a really powerful play. It really is, and if you ever get a chance to go, I really, I really hope that you do. But whenever we got finished with that play, and like I said, and we all took away different parts of it, uh, and on the way home, we're discussing it, you know, and we're just saying, hey, you know, what did you, what did you think about that play? What, did you, what was your favorite part? What did you like? Uh, and, you know, everybody said different stuff, and there was one part of that play that, that stuck with me. Uh, and it was, it's crazy, it's going to sound weird, uh, but when the when the when the play kind of starts, there's a there's a guy in the play, and he's kind of got this red kind of kind of cape on, you know, and he's got longer hair, he's got this beard, just looks like a normal guy, and he's standing there. The first time I see him, he's standing with some Roman soldiers, okay. And so and so I don't think anything about it. I'm just thinking, oh, you know, he's probably maybe an upper guy in the a commander in the army. You know, I, don't, I, I just don't, I don't think about it. You know, that's, that's, that's where my mind went. And so then, as the play goes on, every time I, I, I see this guy, he just, he just shows up randomly, okay? And he'll get there, and if you see the Roman soldiers, when, when they're talking, he's, he's there by them, okay? So again, I'm just like, okay, what's, it's, it's some commander. Uh, well, then later, you've got uh, guys that are just kind of talking, and 
uh, groups, and you see him, and he's just he's walking around. You know, he's just just walking amongst them. Okay, and so I was like, well, that's kind of weird. You know, he doesn't say anything, he doesn't do anything, but he he just sits there and he's walking around among them. And then, you know, I, I mean, I, it took me a little while, but you know, I finally, I finally kind of start figuring out. You know, all of a sudden, whenever the Pharisees are trying to figure out, well, you know, what are we going to do? How can we get Jesus? You know, what, what can we do? There he is. You know, he's, he's right there. Okay, when, when Judas, when Judas betrays him, okay, and he takes the money from it, there he is. He's right there. When, when he's dying on the cross, there he is. You know, he's, he's right there. Uh, and throughout that play, he always appeared, okay? And he always appeared at the worst possible time. You know, at the worst possible time. And so I finally figured out, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, that, that's genius. Right? That's genius what they did in this play right? to represent the devil in that way. You know, they, that's how they represented the devil, just walking around among us. Just, just sitting there, uh, and and he's there all the time. Uh, we don't see him, you know. We don't see him, but we, I mean, we do, but we don't see him like that. And I thought that was a great representation of the enemy. You know, that's where he is. He's constantly there, constantly walking around, uh, and he's constantly influencing other people. And so maybe this is kind of a going to be a weird service, but that's the, the, the title today is The Whisper, uh, The Whisper. Now, whenever I was going to start doing this, it was going to be The Promise, okay, but that didn't really fit, because I, I can't tell you how many times that I've, I've kind of changed this, uh, but The Whisper, I feel like, is more appropriate, uh, it's more appropriate, and so after we got through all of that, Guys, you know, there was a, there was a verse that, uh, that, that kept popping in my head. I've read it. I've seen it. Uh, and I, I, I think it, uh, it, uh, it, it applies here. And that's in Peter 5, verse 8. All right, Peter 5, verse 8. And it says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, lion looking for someone to devour. Okay? So I've heard that several times, you know, and I've always thought, you know, if that's if that's the case, you know, I'm not I'm not a I'm not a I'm not a super smart guy, but you know what? If I if I see a lion uh, or something like that that's going to do me harm, I'm going to stay away. Okay? I'm going to I'm going to stay away. I'm not going to get close to it. Okay? I'm not going to get close to it. But this is this is what I found out. Okay? He, he can turn into a roaring lion, but it starts off with a whisper. All right? It starts off with a whisper. That's all it is. He plants a seed. All right? He plants a seed. And he plants a seed of doubt in your mind, and then you always have the choice of whether or not you're going to let that seed grow, right? or are you going to kind of snuff it out. Right? And I'm, I'm going to give you an example here in a minute uh, from my life uh, of just how that 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 works right? but if we let it grow like I said you know we, we can we start doubting our ability we doubt our choices uh, and maybe we start questioning our faith and it all comes from one word from the devil right? it tells you that he roams around like a roaring lion looking for those to devour but it always starts with a whisper right? it always starts with a whisper you know, it could be one drink won't hurt. Take one drink. You know, it could be why aren't you successful? You know, why aren't you successful? It could be, hey, it's not worth fighting for. There's tons of questions that just kind of pop up into your mind. Guys, and don't think those are just random. Uh, don't, don't think. Uh, it's, it, it's an attack. Uh, it's an attack, and if you let it grow, guys, it'll consume you. Uh, it'll consume you. So, you know, this year uh, in, uh, in, in football for our, our season, 
Guys, y'all know, most of you know, guys, I, I coach here uh, in Dublin. Uh, I've, I've coached here for a, a, a number of years. I've had, we've had some really good seasons, and we've had some, some really bad seasons. You know, we've, 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 we've run the gambit, you know, been to the playoffs, you know, haven't won a game. You know, we've, we've, been, we've been through through it all. And so this season, this season was tough. It was a, it was a tough season for us. Uh, and we didn't have a whole lot of success. Okay, you know, we won one game. Uh, we were in several, but we won one game. Guys, and as a, as a coach, uh, guys, I, I, it wears on you. Uh, it, it wears on you. Uh, and so don't think, uh, and I, I'm just going to tell you, I, I had that probably the middle of the season, I, I had that, that whisper that, uh, that just said, why, why aren't you successful? Why aren't you successful? Now, most of the time, you know, I'm not going to sit here. I can make all kinds of, I can argue back and forth. But at that time, guys, I'm, I'm feeling pretty down. I, I was, I was kind of down, you know. And so that question, just that question, sat there and just consumed me. Just consumed me. And so I would sit there and I would just, guys, I, I would sit there and uh, I, I, would, I would look, you know, and start asking questions of myself. and like, do I even, do I know what I'm doing anymore? I mean, what am I doing? Am I, t- am I telling these kids the right thing? I mean, am I, am I putting them in the, in the best position to be successful? I mean, am I, am I doing that? You know, I'm, I'm questioning that. I mean, I've, guys, I'm, 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 not gonna, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but I feel like I'm pretty good at what I do. Uh, but you know what? I, I sit there and I started questioning it. I started questioning it all because of that question that crept into my head. You know, and then I started questioning. I was like, man, am I even, is this where I'm supposed to, am I even supposed to be here? I mean, is, is, is coaching and teaching, is that what I'm supposed to do? You know, I sat there and I questioned that. You know, I, guys, I, it, it was tough. I, I took it really, really hard, really hard this year. Like I said, I, I, I can't tell you why. I don't know. I don't know. I know I drove my wife crazy. Uh, I, I drove her crazy because I was just, my attitude was awful. Uh, it was awful. You know, but I, like I said, it all started, it all started with that one little whisper, that question, and I just let it consume me. Uh, it, it consumed me, and I, I couldn't get over it. Uh, I couldn't get over it. Now, you know, it started with that whisper, and I knew that the, the way that I could get over it was to, was to pray, you know, was to pray about it. Guys, but the, the crazy thing is, and maybe, and this is just me, and maybe this doesn't apply to you, guys, the, the more that I get into it, the more that you kind of get down on yourself, the less time I would spend in prayer. Isn't that nuts? I mean, it's the one thing that's going to help me, but the less time, that, that's, the, 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 that's the, the least amount of time that I spent in prayer uh, was going through that. Uh, because I kept trying to figure out how can I fix the pro- how can I fix it? What what can I do? I mean, I, I've, I've looked up drills. I looked I've looked up I looked up all kinds of stuff, clinics. I mean, where can I go? What can I do? You know, I, I tried. But the one thing that I I didn't do uh, was sit there uh, and pray. I just I didn't do it. Uh, I didn't do it, and so that just it just makes it worse. You know, I we we have a routine. We get up every morning and we read the Bible and uh, we, we've, we've done that for, I don't know, four, four years or so. You know, we try to do the, do the Bible in a year thing. And guys, I can, I can tell you, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll get up and uh, I'll read it. All right? I'll, I'll read it, all right? but don't ask me what it said because right? I, I can't tell you. Right? I can't tell you. I did it. I went through the motion. I read it. Right? But sometimes... My mind is, is off somewhere else. Uh, and that's, that's kind of exactly what happened right during this time. Because I'd, I'd read it, I'd just get over there, and I was like, man, you know, the, the one thing, I, I need to pray. I need to pray about it. I need to pray. And I'd start praying. I'd, have, you ever been, have you ever started praying, and then all of a sudden, your prayer stops, and then you start, you start getting in your mind again? Uh, and you just start sitting there, and you start thinking, like, oh, well, I could do this, I could do this, I could do this. And then you're, I'm like, what am I doing? No, no, because I'm not even praying anymore. You know, that, that's, how, that's how caught up I was. Uh, that's how caught up I was. Uh, and so that whole, that whole thing, guys, is uh, the devil.
putting all those thoughts in your head. Doing that, uh, and trying to lead you down a path that you know you don't need to go down, uh, a path of uh, self-doubt, uh, and that's, that's exactly where I was at that time. Uh, not, wasn't good for me. Now, you know, the devil's always around. He always, he's always lurking around us uh, every day. And he's just waiting for us to give him an opening uh, to plant that seed. You know, he's, he's just waiting. Now, I hate that I'm consumed with this world. And maybe you can say that you're not, but because, I, I mean, the, the world influences me. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't matter what I do, it, does, it influences me. You know, so I, I am kind of consumed, you know, with the way other people think about me, you know, and how I'm perceived. Okay, I, I am. I, to, it's, a, it's a fault. Uh, it's a fault. And so, like I said, it's something that I, I, I have to work on. But I know I need to pray and spend time in the scriptures and surround myself with strong people of faith. I know that. Uh, but the devil tells me to question uh, why I'm going through the problem. You know, why are you having to go through this problem? You know, have you ever done that? You're going through a problem, uh, and then do you ever start to sit there and, and think to yourself, well, why? Why? Why am I having to go through this problem? Uh, because they want you, he wants you to doubt. Uh, he wants you to doubt. He wants you to question your faith. Uh, question your faith there. Uh, t- so uh, that's all we need there, you know, for the devil to push us away from God's word uh, and, to, and what he wants us to do. So at that play, you know, I, lear- I learned a little bit uh, about the devil. Uh, I learned that he's always around and he's always looking for a way to, to try and trip us up. Okay? He's very cunning and he's very good at planting seeds of doubt. Uh, he's good at causing us to get tripped up and setting snares uh, around for us. Uh, he's around and he's looking for ways to, to get to you. Uh, and are we going to let him do that or are we going to follow what God tells us to do? Because we've given examples in the Bible uh, that, uh, you know, Jesus, Jesus was tempted too. You know, he was tempted, uh, and he overcame all those temptations. And we're going to look at that in here in just a second. You know, the, the, the worst one, you know, he's, he's, he fasted for 40 days, uh, for 40 days uh, in the desert. He was fasting for 40 days, and the devil came and tempted him, you know, when he was weak. You know, tried to, tried to get him when he was weak. Uh, and... He never, he never sinned, you know, he never sinned, he never gave up, you know, and every time that he did that, what did he answer the devil with? Scripture, all right, he gave him scripture, so that tells me it's pretty important that we've got to stay uh, in scripture, you know, we have to, we have to read, you know, we have to stay in the word. All right, so the, the next uh, verse, guys, I'm, it's, it's Matthew 4, 1 through 11, uh, Matthew 4, 1 through 11, guys, and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to kind of break it up, and we're going we're gonna to talk about them as we go. Uh, so the first one uh, is going to be Matthew 4, 1 through 4. Uh, Matthew 4, 1 through 4. And it says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. So just think, I want want you to think about it. You know, if you if you're working, say that you've you've worked, because I say, you know, happens to me sometimes I I you know, I skip lunch, you know, we're we're working through or whatever, and whenever I get home, Guys, it looks like, I mean, I hope there's something to eat because I'm tearing that place apart trying to find something. You know, I can't go four hours without eating something or I'm going to get hangry. You know, I'm going to get angry. Jesus went 40 days, 40 days without food, okay? 40 days without food, and the devil sees that as an opportunity. All right? And then whenever he comes to him, guys, it's, he doesn't ask him to do some huge big miraculous sign what does he do he goes listen man i know you're hungry all right you're hungry turn that stone to bread and eat you can do it that's not a big deal so i mean if he would have told me that before he got those words out of his mouth i would have had a steak and some potatoes and all kinds of stuff all right but jesus knew all right he knew he's not first he knew who the question was coming from all right he knew the the temptation there 
He knew who it was from, uh, and he sat there and he quoted scripture back at him, which man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Uh, he knew the source of the person that was asking him, asking him to do something simple, but he was asking him to do it when he was weak. Okay, he's weak. Guys, if you're, if you're, if you're ever hungry, I mean, if you've gone without food for an extended period of time, guys, you know, you know, your blood sugar gets low, you get that headache, you know, you get all, you get all that. Guys, he's, he's weak. Jesus is physically, he's physically weak. All right? He's physically weak here. All right? And so we're going we're gonna to see uh, that that's why he's tempted. All right? So the, the, the devil, guys, I'm, he, he tempts us in, in four main ways. Okay, four main ways. And if you ever look at temptations that you're going to have to go through, guys, you, they'll fall into one of these categories. Guaranteed. Okay, guaranteed. Okay, and the first way that he's going to tempt you is physical pain. Okay, Phys- physical pain. All right? And so that's, that's what Jesus is going through right here. He's having physical pain from the hunger that he's, he's, he's living without. He, he's just, he's hungry. All right? His stomach's in knots. I mean, he's, it's physical pain. Okay, physical pain. The second way that he's going to be tempted is emotional pain. All right, physical pain, emotional pain. All right, and then the third all right, is physical pleasure. Okay, physical pleasure. And then the fourth is emotional pleasure. All right, those are the four ways that uh, Satan tries to tempt us. Okay, physical pain, emotional pain, physical pleasure, emotional pleasure. Okay, those are the four ways. If you've ever been tempted, guys, guaranteed you can put it in one of those four categories. Okay, you can put it in one of those. Now, you know, it says, uh, if, you, if you've ever uh, been weak, or you ever been weak and done something that you shouldn't have, uh, you know, with, with, because of your, you were in pain, uh, given into a desire or a physical need because you were hurting, because you just wanted to stop. Uh, uh, when we're in physical pain, guys, it reveals to others who we really are. Uh, when you're in physical pain and how you, kinda, how you handle yourself, really reveals to others uh, a, a little bit about you. Uh, a little bit about you. And so I can give you an example uh, of, of how to, to test that. All right, if you get up in the middle of the night and you've got to go to the restroom and you get up and you go and you stub your toe, you kick your toe on something, all right, you do that, what kind of words come out of your mouth? All right, what, what words come out of your mouth? You sit there and say, praise Jesus. All right, I stubbed my toe. Thank you, Lord. You know, a bolt of energy has shot through my body. Thank you. Uh, or do you use the cow words that Jimmy talks about? Uh, because the, I, I guarantee you, I'm waking everybody up in the house because I'm mad. Uh, I'm mad. So physical pain uh, reveals a lot uh, about what we had. Jesus went through physical pain, but he didn't sin. Uh, he didn't sin. All right, so then we're going to go to the next one, All right, the next verse, uh, which is uh, verse 5, starting in verse 5. Uh, it says, Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. It says, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. So in this one, all right, the devil is tempting Jesus with emotional pain. All right, with emotional pain now. All right, he's tempting him to see if he'll jump off, prove that he's God's son. You know, I, it's emotional pain because he's questioning who he is. All right, you, ever have, you know how it kind of hurts your feelings sometimes? If you tell somebody, hey, this is, this, this is uh, what, I, what I'm about, this is what I stand for, you do something, and they're like, well, I don't believe you. Uh, I, I don't believe you. It kind of hurts you emotionally. All right, hurts you emotionally. That, that's what he's tempting him with now. All right, it says, no harm's going to come your way if you truly are God's son. All right, so he's questioning him. All right, he's just he's questioning him now. All right, so he's trying to get him to prove something that he, Jesus doesn't have to prove. All right, he doesn't have to prove it. He knows who he is. All right, he knows who he is. And he knows uh, that all he would have to do is say a word, and none of this would even happen. All right, he, could, he could be wherever he wants. All right, that's all he would have to do. And so I think it's good, too, that Jesus sits here every time he's tempted. So the second temptation that he has, he sits there and he quotes Scripture again, right? which is don't put the Lord your God to the test. Right? Don't test God. 
All right, his understanding is a whole lot higher than ours, and we don't need to test him. All right, but how many times do we? All right, do we test him? Have you ever tested him? I have. You know, I've, I've, I've done it. Guys, I've, I've asked for signs whenever I'm praying about something, when I'm hurting. You know, I've, I've, I've done that. I've lost my parents. You know, I'd, I've asked for some kind of, you know, like, Lord, I just want to know. Is it going to be okay? Man, just show me something. Show me something. Uh, I've, I've done that. I've, I'm testing them, and I don't, I don't need to. Uh, I, I don't need to. Uh, uh, have you ever opened your Bible? Uh, whenever I was a, a, a young Christian, I used, I used to do this all the time. <coughs> because I didn't, I didn't read the Bible. You know, I didn't read the Bible, and I'd be going through something, and I would think, you know what? I'm just going to open the Bible, and wherever it lands, there's going to be some words of encouragement there. It's going to make me feel better, okay? And you know what? Sometimes there were. Sometimes I got lucky, but sometimes there's nothing, you know? But again, I'm just testing. I'm like, hey, that, that's a sign. You know, you'd be showing me a sign. All right, so the last part of that is 8 through 11, all right? Verses 8 through 11. So it says, again, the devil took him to a very high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and all their splendor. And this time, uh, and at this time, he says, I'll give you uh, all of those. He said, if you bow down and worship me, Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and the angels came and attended him. So the devil, he does the last two temptations here. Okay, last two temptations. Tried to tempt Jesus by giving him complete control over all the kingdoms of the world. All right, you're going to be the ruler over everything in the world. That's what you're, you're going to be. So he's offering, offering Jesus emotional pleasure and physical pleasure by doing this. Okay, emotional pleasure that he can control everyone uh, in the whole world. All right, you know, that's, that's got to kind of make you feel good that uh, you're going to do whatever I tell you to do. You know, that's, that's emotional pleasing, okay? Physical pleasure and the fact that he would never want for anything. Right? That, that's, that's physically pleasurable for me uh, to, to think that I wouldn't have to want for anything in my life ever again. Okay? So those are the, the last two temptations that he did. He could have all the riches of the world and never need for anything, and all he had to do was bow down and worship him. And Jesus answered, uh, with worship the Lord your God and serve only him. So in every temptation, Jesus answered with scripture. Not, he knows that the only way that we're going to survive the temptations is to be grounded in scripture. And that's really what we've got to get from this whole, that whole verse there, guys. We have to have an answer when Satan starts to whisper in your ear. And we have to know the tricks of the enemy. And we have to know that we have uh, a way out. All right, we always have a way out. We have someone to stand with us and someone who's gone through the same thing as us. So my temptations uh, may not be the same as yours. Right? The devil uh, uses many tricks to try, and, to try and get us, and it's not a one-size-fits-all approach. He's pretty cunning, guys, and he studies each one of us. Uh, and so he knows. Uh, he, he knows what will get you. So I'm just going to tell you, uh, guys, you know, when I was younger, I was stupid. Yeah. yeah, We could all probably say that, you know. And, and so maybe if he was going to tip me when I was younger, maybe he might have tried to use alcohol, okay? Uh, he might have. Uh, but I'm telling you that today, he's not going to use alcohol to tempt me. Uh, he, he's not. Because, uh, guys, just, just from what I've gone through, I've lost two parents to alcoholism, and I've, I've seen how that affects a family. So that's, that's not a temptation for me, okay? It's not a temptation. But it might be a temptation for you, okay? But maybe when he whispers in your ear and says you're not good enough, maybe you've got all kinds of confidence and say, yes, I am. Uh, you're not getting me with that. But maybe that brings me to my knees, okay? Maybe, maybe it does. There's all kinds of temptations. They're all, and they're different, and he's going to attack us each one differently. Uh, it's not all going to be the same. Uh, maybe he doesn't tell you that you're not capable, like I said, but he does tell me that. Uh, so I watched this play, and it changed my outlook on the hard times that I have to go through. 
Uh, it showed me the errors of my ways and just how easy it is to go down the wide path. Okay, the wide path is the easy one. You know, it's the easy one, uh, and it's it's the one that the Satan wants us to go down. So I played the other day about Jesus' life, and I'm so happy that, guys, that we serve a, a risen Savior, guys who willingly gave His life for our sins. We serve a mighty God who knows that we're going to get tripped up by the devil. He's going to tempt us. Uh, but he's always there welcoming us with open arms. He's always going to show us a way out. He's going to give us a way. So, Lord, I just want to say thank you for opening my eyes uh, to your majesty and grace. And thank you for loving me and dying for our sins. Thank you for paying the debt that we could never pay. So some of the takeaways from today's message. As I said, I don't know why I do that. I think it's, it's a teacher thing. Uh, so... so the devil's always around, okay? He's always around, and he's always going to look for a way uh, for us to let him in. Uh, he's a smart, cunning foe, and he starts off with a whisper and then roams around like a roaring lion. The second, we always have a way out of our problems. We do not have to listen to the devil. We need to spend time in prayer and the word because the devil is a master of twisting words and ideas to make them sound good. Third, we have all the answers we need to life's troubles in the scripture. There's story after story of people who have gone through trials and tribulations and have come out of them because of their faith, because they prayed and stayed in the word. Fourth, finally, God uses all kinds of messages to give us hope and show us the way. It could be a play. It could be a song. It could be a gesture by someone or any other sign. He's always working in our lives, and we have to be ready to see and accept what he wants us to do. So guys, the devil is real, and he's around us all the time. We may not see him, I saw him in the play. We may not see him, but he's always there and he's always trying to lead us away from the glory of God. He's trying to use the same tactics against me that he used against Jesus. Same tactics. Jesus showed us how to deal with it and how to resist. He's trying to pluck another soul away from God. That's his goal. He's always around, but I don't have to listen to him. I have a father who loves me uh, and who's always with me. Thank you, God, for always loving me, Lord, and thank you for showing your love to me through a play. A play that I really didn't want to go see because my attitude wasn't good. But Lord, thank you for doing that. Guys, and with that, as that's, uh, that's, the, that's the message I have for you. Because uh, I, I, want, I do want you to leave and, and just remember the four ways. If you keep it in your mind, guys, you'll always be ready. If you know how he's going to attack you, then you're always going to be ready for it. Uh, physical pain, emotional pain, physical pleasure, emotional pleasure. Uh, the four ways. Uh, it's the four ways. All right, guys, at this time, guys, I'm going to go ahead and ask the, the band to go ahead and come on back up. Guys, I'm going to close this in a, in a word of prayer. And then uh, let y'all get home and watch the Cowboys beat up on Green Bay. <laughs> All right, Lord, I come to you right now. I just want to thank you. Thank you for your word, Lord, and for your example of how to resist temptations of the devil. Thank you for loving us, Lord, and thank you for dying for our sins. Lord, I ask that our eyes are open to the ploys of the devil. Lord, and that we follow your example in dealing with them. I pray that everyone here is wrapped in your grace and mercy, Lord. I pray that we all enjoy the great weather that you've sent our way, Lord, and that uh, we travel safely home. Lord, be with us. Lead God and direct us. Uh, Lord, watch our, our every step. Lord, we love you and we praise you. Lord, forgive us for the many times that we fail you. Lord, and I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I found a friend.
and in Jesus He's everything to me He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul The lily of the valley and Him alone I see All I need to cleanse and make me whole and Sorrow, He's my comfort In trouble, He's my stay He tells me every care on Him to roll He's the lily of the valley The bright and morning star the fairest of ten thousand to my soul you never never leave me nor yet forsake me here i live by faith and do his blessed will a wall of fire about me and nothing now to fear with his man of my hungry soul I feel Then sweeping up to glory To see his blessed face the Rivers of delight shall ever roll He's the lily of the valley The bright and morning star Fairest of ten thousand to my soul. Yeah, he's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. Amen. Y'all have a great week.